What's going on, guys? It's Zafarino. I have something very important, potentially top secret, about the fireball game that can make or break your fireball traps. So fireball traps are very important for a zoning character because when you perform them correctly, your opponent will not be able to jump the follow-up fireball, and it gives you enough time to anti-ear them as a result. This thing I'm going to show you, this tiny little nuance, can easily be ignored, but it's something that's very important in order to keep your fireball game tight and precise. Those are two things that are required for having a masterful and intense fireball pressure style game. Right here, you're going to see that I have three recordings. And each recording is going to be a demonstration of the most precise fireball pattern, the, the slightly less disciplined version, and one where it's very dangerous to perform because it will end up giving your opponent too much wiggle room to slide out of your fireball traps and potentially punish you the jump in. So we're going to start recording, recording one. It's Sagat doing the masterful fireball trap that I'm going to I'm going to teach to you guys today, okay? Here he's doing slow tiger shot because when you do slow fireballs, you're gaining the most amount of advantage. And advantage is important because that means you move first, right? So I want to throw a fireball and have as much advantage to the point where my next follow follow-up fireball is protected by that advantage that I just gained. Meaning that if my opponent takes a big risk, like a jump in, I'd have enough advantage to recover from the fireball that I threw underneath and still anti-air them. It's very crucial to have a successful fireball game by doing this, okay? So it's important to understand this that I'm about to show you. So in this recording, you're going to see Sagat does a fireball, and you see it consistently keeps me plus 11, right? Okay, so this is ideal. This is what you want. So before I explain what happens in that, I'm going to show you the uh, lesser disciplined versions of this fireball shot. So you see here, if you look at the frame advantage, the advantage differs. It goes from plus 10 to plus 8, but you see that there's an inconsistency there. So why didn't it stay plus 10 all the way through, like the first recorded stayed plus 11? We're at the same exact range, right? So something changed. Well, I'm going to show you what changed. Okay, and then this is the last, the last version where it goes from 11 to 9 to 8, okay? So what's happening in all three of this is that I am performing fireball, but I'm taking advantage of the fireball window, right? The uh, execution window, rather, in Street Fighter V, where there's a three-frame window to where the game will accept your inputs at the end of recovery. So that's why combos are a lot easier in this game at, compared to other previous versions of the game, okay? So this is how you can take advantage of this in other ways. So, because of this execution leniency, we have a wider window to input a fireball and do it in a way where we don't move. So, what do I mean by that? So, if, like, in this last recording, the reason why the fireball advantage changed so much was because I kept doing quarter circle forward fireball, right? But then I would buffer after the recovery of the fireball, right? So, it would only be, like, probably for, like, the last two inputs. But that's enough of a difference for Sagat to move forward little by little. That's why the advantage changed gradually. Okay, so in order for us to maintain and sustain a consistent advantage, we want to buffer the execution of the fireball inside of that three-frame window so that the game can automatically, on the very first frame out of recovery, the game says, all right, Sagat, I see what you're trying to do here. You're trying to throw a fireball, and we just execute fireball. So if we go back here, if you look at Colleen, when I do quarter circle forward, you see I'm moving forward, right? I'm moving forward unless I do the forward on the same exact frame as me pressing a punch like that, right? But there's human, there's human error involved in potentially doing this. So by taking advantage of the window inside of a recovery buffer, then we don't inch our way forward and we don't alter the spacing. Spacing is crucial in order to have uh, a successful and intense fireball game, all right? If you ruin your spacing by as much as a frame, it can make a difference between somebody being able to jump in on me or somebody being able to get anti-aired by my DP. That's why fireball characters require such precision. So the thing I'm trying to show you here is to learn to fireball during the ending frames of the previous fireball. You understand? So that way, the game accepts the input as quickly as possible, and Sagat never moves forward. Because if he moves forward, then this is what happens. You're going to see he inches his way forward. And look at his front foot. Before he throws, you look at his front foot compared here, right? His front foot is exactly on that line in the middle right in front of his front foot. 
is leading foot is the line that tells you there are five squares on the other side and another five on the opposite side. Okay, so that's what you use for your measurement measurement tool there. So we see his front foot is right there, right? As soon as I reload the, the replay, his front foot's there. Now, if I pause this after the second fireball, before he does the DP, you're going to see that his front foot moves, okay? So watch this. I'm gonna take off this recording and look at his front foot. Look how much further he is. That is enough of a difference to break my fireball trap. And now it goes from a real, a real fireball trap, an unjumpable fireball trap, to now somebody can jump in and do Street Fighter V bogus things to me. I don't want that to happen, or I'm gonna cry. So, instead, we decide after the second fireball. Yeah, I still got DP there, but guess what? It wasn't actually a real fireball trap. So, it's a little bit, it's still like, hey, it can work out for you, but that relies too much on the opponent messing up. So, yeah, I did have to be kind of precise with the timing of my jump in there, but at the same time, how about we just eliminate that possibility entirely, right? So, and then this is the last, the last recording. This. Should just now look what happens. I lose all of my corner carry. You know, you don't want that. Okay. So you see, this is the ideal way. If you look at the fireball here, right? And now I get rid of this. Look at where his front foot is. That's the first recording. So basically, what I'm doing is during the recovery frames of my fireball, I'm making sure that I input, I buffer the motion before I really recover, and then I hit the button within that three frame window so the game accepts it as quickly as possible all right so that way sagat doesn't move and i maintain my fireball trap all right so any character can do this all the shotos any character with a fireball anything like that all right and you can use this in footsies too you can buff you can press the buttons at the end of certain pokes so that way you know like unique attacks if you have a unique attack like Yurian's forward medium punch you want to be precise and have a certain spacing then you can do the forward medium punch during the recovery so that way you don't move too far forward but you don't, you know, you're still able to make sure that the game registers that input and you do get the unique attack. All right. So hopefully that helped you guys out. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I'm Audi. I'm going to make sure I do more of these fireball videos. Um, these are just like little unique elements to the fireball game that will help a lot of players and potentially help you fight against the fireball players too. So that way, if you can recognize these things, you'll learn, you'll learn the timing and the precision that it'll take for you to jump in on a certain a fireball zoner based off of their patterns or spacings this this and that okay so take care i'll catch you guys in the next stream peace